Parkinson's disease nutrition. They edu educate Parkinson's community on current research regarding disease and nutrition. Um, they place for people with PD, their care partners to find help managing their disease symptoms and feel their best through their healthier food and nutrition education. So welcome, Teresa and Vanessa. Thank you for having us here today. My name is Teresa Kitchen, and with me is Vanessa Leschak. We are the co-founders of Parkinson's Disease Nutrition. We are a non profit organization based here in Tucson, Arizona. We teach on beneficial nutrition to persons with Parkinson's disease and Vanessa is going to do our presentation for us today. Hello everybody. I'm, um... Melissa, how does that look? Do you see the one? Yes, I see your um, your PowerPoint now. Just the first slide? Yes. Okay. So, um, hello everyone, I'm Vanessa Leschak. I'm gonna be doing a really short um, presentation on nutrition and foods for people with Parkinson's disease. And then we'll have time for a Q&A afterwards. So, um, at Parkinson's disease nutrition, we teach food. We do nutrition consults, cooking classes, meal delivery service. We do community events, we do online webinars, we do support group talks, um, kind of obviously because of everything going on, moving to more online stuff. Um, so that's what we do. It's just Teresa and I, we kind of manage everything. Um, we've been doing this for a little bit over a year as a nonprofit. Before that, I've been in the Parkinson's community for 10 plus years. Teresa's been in it with me for a couple of years and then she's more specialized in bariatric geriatrics and older adult nutrition. So what is the best diet for Parkinson's disease? There is no specific diet because you can't really prescribe a diet for Parkinson's disease. There's just not enough research. It's really hard to do clinical trials and managing someone's food and diet to say well, this is what's best for your disease. But if you go to nutritionfacts.org, they have a great library of resources and videos done by some scientific research and by a really great doctor, Dr. Greger. He does these videos and talks about the links between certain foods and Parkinson's disease. So when I started going into this over 10 plus years ago, there was nothing online. You couldn't find any information. And now it's coming um, a little bit more mainstream as to, oh, wow, hey, we should be treating our bodies and our because that's something you do every day, regardless of what's going on in your life and your situation, you are eating. Those are um, things to keep in mind is whatever you're putting in your body, it's eating your body, it's either hurting or helping your body. So nutritionfacts.org, if you just Google, or if you just search Parkinson's disease, it'll show up with um, more information about more specific research on the Parkinson's and uh, uh, nutrition. So we promote a primarily plant-based diet. We talk about adding more fruits and vegetables to your diet and limiting the, the meat products, the dairy products, the animal products, because there's actually research that shows that animal products can add to Parkinson's disease and diabetes and heart disease and just overall like bad health type of stuff. So really we just talk about, you don't have to completely limit all of those things, but maybe adding in more fibrous fruits and vegetables are beneficial to your body. This slide shows what a plant-based diet consists of. So it's basically everything besides meat and dairy. Um, you got your fruits, your vegetables, your nuts, seeds, grains. Um, those are all high in vitamins and antioxidants. There's a lot of fiber in those foods. Fiber is really good for people with Parkinson's because they have constipation issues. There's a lot of, it, Fruits and vegetables are a high water content, which is also good for constipation. So again, good for people with Parkinson's disease. So we talk a lot about foods to eliminate if you can completely avoid these things, but it's hard. So we just talk about limiting these foods and adding in more beneficial foods. So a person with Parkinson's really our, our primary concern is to avoid dairy. Dairy has scientific research that shows it can add to 
disease. It adds to, you know, inflammation of the body. It adds to constipation. There is chemicals in dairy that can cause Parkinson's disease. We'll go over that slide. Also, I will give this um, PowerPoint to Melissa, and she can email it to everyone who's uh, joining this call, this webinar. Otherwise, it's on our website also, and we'll let you know the website at the end of the call. Um, so avoiding dairy, which includes your milk, your cheese, butter, ice cream, yogurt. Avoiding processed foods. Processed foods tend to have more chemicals than real food. So if you look at, you know, a can of spaghetti and meatballs that cost 99 cents at the store, that's going to be full of a bunch of stuff you don't even know what that is. So you want to try and avoid those things because it's just a bunch of chemicals. There's no real food in those. Um, again, those processed foods tend to contain higher sodium and sugar, and you want to avoid those also. Those are inflammatory foods that inflame your body. So when your body's inflamed, it's kind of like a fight or flight mode. So you don't want your body constantly fighting. You want the inflammation to be down so your body can rest and process what it's actually really dealing with. Sugar substitutes are another chemical substance. We don't really know what things like Splenda and Equal and Sweet and Low are made of. Um, there's been lots of cancerous sugar substitutes years after they were created. So you just really want to avoid those sugar substitutes. If you are diabetic or sugar is an issue, you want to um, use something like a stevia or uh, there's another sugar that's comparable to like granulated sugar and it's called Swerve. So those aren't going to spike the, the insulin and the diabetic sugars. Keep, they're diabetic friendly, but they're also more natural than the sugar substitutes are. So instead of those, you know, dairy products and processed foods, try dairy free products. Um, because diets and nutrition and things are always trending, the stores try and stay, you know, up with those trends. So all of the stores, we're in Arizona, so you have Safeway, you have Fry's, Walmart, Target, um, Albertsons, Sprouts, Trader Joe's, all of these stores have dairy-free options. You can look for the words dairy-free, you can look for the words vegan. Those will all mean that there's no dairy and meat products in those um, products. So try a dairy-free milk or a dairy-free ice cream. Um, dairy-free milks are just made from different nuts. They can come from almond um, nuts, they can come from cashews, they can come from seeds, they can come from hemp seeds, they can come from oatmeal, flax seeds. So just try a couple dairy-free products and switch those out for your regular products and see how you feel. And, you know, those are a little bit doable steps instead of changing your whole entire diet all at once, which can be overwhelming and stressful. And you don't want to stress your body out more. So when we talk about changing your diet, we talk about, you know, adding these happier, healthier things, taking out some bad stuff. If you are interested in our dairy-free trade-out sheet, we have that. Again, you can email us or I can email it to Melissa. We'll figure out how to get those. But we have all these resources to help you kind of switch over to healthier things. Um, there's dairy-free yogurt. You'll find the yogurt in the yogurt section. You'll find the dairy-free ice cream either with the regular ice cream. They get targeted with the regular ice cream. At Fry's, it's in its own little section. It'll say dairy-free or vegan or plant-based. Those are the keywords you want to look for. Um, adding fresh fruits and vegetables to your diet is always a great idea. Fresh fruits and vegetables are the best. Frozen is okay, but when you get into that canned stuff, again, that's more processed and not really organic and real, so you want to try and avoid canned things. I understand that they're a little bit easier to, to deal with, but try fresh fruits and vegetables. All the antioxidants, all the fiber. And then again, we already talked about those sugar substitutes. Raw sugar is better than sweet or equal. Honey, maple syrup, and then stevia and swerve are the ones that are better for you. They're less processed. There's nothing fake in them, and they're diabetic friendly. This next slide is dairy more explained about the process on how, how it's bad for people with Parkinson's. So there's neurotoxins in dairy shown to play a significant role in the development of disease. Those pesticides in the environment, our cows are eating them, whether it's through genetics, whether it's through the, the soil, the water, um, their grains, they're ingesting these chemicals that 
that people are using, those neurotoxins. So the cows are, are creating our dairy products, right? They create that yogurt that we love. And the ice cream we have to have at night and the cheese on our sandwiches. All of these chemicals, the, the PCBs and the DDTs, are all found in dairy products. Dairy products are consumed by us regularly. We're taught from, you know, you're breastfed or then you're formula fed and then you start drinking a bottle of milk or a sippy cup of milk. So from tiny little babies, one and two years old, we're taught, yeah, milk is good for you. They teach it in school that dairy is good for you because of calcium. You can get calcium from other products. Um, trying to avoid those, those dairy products is much better for your body because over time, so let's say 80 years old, you've been drinking milk since you were two, you have that 78 years of consuming that, those dairy products and those neurotoxins, they kind of accumulate up in your brain. And that's what this little, the little graph with the red dots are. All the neurotoxins are accumulating up in the brain. So when that builds up in there, it starts to affect the body. And that can affect that part of the Parkinson's brain in our bodies. And then dairy also lowers your uric acid, which is super important as an antioxidant to protect our brains. Um, so foods to increase, antioxidants, antioxidants, again, they're going to protect, protect your, your brain, they're going to protect your cells, they're going to protect you from that oxidative damage, the stress of living in our environment. Um, so some of the benefits of increasing your antioxidants is slower aging, you're going to have healthier skin, a reduced cancer risk is linked to higher antioxidants. Antioxidants naturally start detoxing your body, which everybody needs, but especially people with Parkinson's. The more detoxing you can do naturally, the better your body is going to be able to sustain and um, kind of keep your Parkinson's at bay and then just help your body overall, not even from Parkinson's, but just, you know, aging and our daily Most vitamins are in your fruits and vegetables, your herbs, those all contain um, antioxidants, vitamin C. Michael J. Fox Foundation did a research project and they have more information on their website. And it says eating a diet high in antioxidants reduces that oxidative stress that aggravates Parkinson's and similar conditions. So you can go on Michael J. Fox's website and again, under their research, search Parkinson's or food or nutrition or antioxidants and it'll give you more of that scientific research. We kind of take the scientific parts and dissect them to make them a little bit easier to comprehend. This is a great chart. We have this chart. Um, if it's not on our website, you can contact us and we can send you. There's a couple more charts in here, but it, this gives you the top 10 antioxidant foods. So kind of keeping in the back of your mind, you can add these foods into your diet. This is a great list. You can put it up on your fridge or take it with you when you go grocery shopping. So goji berries and pomegranates, they have the highest antioxidants. Goji berries are little tiny dried berries. You can get them in like the bulk section at Whole Foods, um, down where like cranberries and raisins are in the regular grocery stores. They're little tart dry berries. So they're good to add to your plant-based yogurt, maybe some granola or cereal, um, a salad. You don't need much and they're, they're fairly expensive, but they're really highly packed with those antioxidants and they're pretty good. They're like a super sour cranberry texture. Um, all of your berries, so all of your purples and reds and, and dark colored berries are going to be really good for you. Those are going to be high in antioxidants. You can still have dark chocolate. We don't ever recommend giving up things like that that you love that are comforting and delicious and those cravings. But just minimize them and find a healthier way. So dark chocolate usually doesn't have any dairy in it either. And it tends to not have, you know, you can go to to Trader Joe's and get a dark chocolate bar that doesn't have any dairy and it's made with pure sugar instead of some sort of chemically based sugar. Dark leafy greens, your spinach and your kale are really good. Fresh in a salad. Um, again, those dark, those dark fruits, the prunes and plums, all of your herbs are going to be high in antioxidants. Dill and parsley are two of the highest ones. If there's a way you can incorporate those, that's going to be best for you. Those are the highest antioxidants. You can use those in all of your dishes. You can roast some potatoes with a little parsley, a little bit of sea salt, and some black pepper, and there you go. You have a kind of healthier dish than, let's say, french fries from fast food. Um, I did recently learn that dry herbs are up there with the fresh ones. So if you can't get all the fresh herbs, 
go and invest in some dry herbs. They're going to be almost as good as the fresh ones. And try and stick to organic when you're doing fruits and vegetables and your herbs. Um, kidney beans and lentils, some of your nuts, pecans and walnuts are the highest. Dark green tea has the highest. Some more foods to increase, we talk about nightshades. Nightshades have natural nicotine, which is neuroprotective. There is research that shows that people who have smoked don't tend to get Parkinson's as much as people who didn't smoke because there is natural, the nicotine is naturally neuroprotective. They can get Alzheimer's, so I don't recommend smoking. However, there is studies that show that, that that natural nicotine is very good for your brain. So Mercola.com did a study and it shows that peppers, are the highest um, content of nicotine. So those are the most neuroprotective. If you can add, you know, peppers into your into your diet a little bit more, that's gonna help you add that natural nicotine and be a little bit better for your brain. So here's a list of the nightshade vegetables. There's controversy over nightshade vegetables because they um, tend to inflame people with inflammatory diseases. So if you are allergic, to nightshade vegetables, and you'll know. You'll, you have either been told by the doctor or you know that if you eat tomatoes and potatoes, you just aren't feeling great. Um, avoid those, don't add these into your diet. But if you're not allergic, these are great vegetables to add to your diet. They're full of vitamins and minerals. They have that natural nicotine, so they're helpful for your brain. Um, tomatoes and eggplants, potatoes, again, those peppers, pretty much in any form, you're gonna have that highest content. Mercola um, suggests eating, I believe, three to four times a week adding in those peppers to your diet or some other nightshades. Cauliflower, and again, that green tea is on here. More foods to increase is your omega-3. So if you're concerned about secondary symptoms of Parkinson's like dementia and confusion, get serious about consuming more soybeans, flaxseed, and kidney beans. Kidney beans was on that antioxidant sheet. So there you go, you, you can get repeat things. So some kidney beans and some fresh herbs and a little bit of quinoa, you're going to have a complete meal and it's going to tick off a bunch of these boxes of things that you should be implementing into your diet. Um, soy in particular is being studied for its against Parkinson's. Again, there's, there's controversy over soy, but if you're going to do soy, do an organic soy like tofu or edamame, which are soybeans, so you can add those into your diet. Do the organic ones, don't do processed soy, don't do, you know, they use a lot of soy as fillers in foods, and if that's more along the lines of that soy controversy. Um, if you have Parkinson's, soy is good for you, but do be careful because it is higher in protein. So if you are going to, let's say, switch out, you know, your your steak twice a night, or twice a night, a soy substitute, like maybe some, some ground tofu with a bunch of herbs and stuff, be careful when you're you're timing your medication with that soy because it is high in protein. So try and do it towards like the end of your night, maybe do it at dinner time. Um, so it doesn't affect you as much and your day is, you know, coming to an end and a little bit calmer. Fiber. So adding fiber to your diet is really good for people with Parkinson's. As we all know, uh, constipation is one of the number one, you know, key things about Parkinson's and then medication and then stress of having Parkinson's and everything else. So people with Parkinson's really need to add a lot of fiber to their diet. This is a really great list of fibrous foods. I won't really go over it, but again, those raspberries, those dark berries, the greens are on here, the herbs are on here, the beans are on here. Um, so adding any of these fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and grains to your diet are going to be beneficial and, you know, cover a lot of these to be adding to your body. This is another good chart. It'll come in this presentation or again, you can reach out to us and we can give you all of these little handouts so you can print them out and have them to kind of, you know, keep at the front of your, your mind. So constipation. The best way to, to, to deal with constipation is adding those fibrous fruits and vegetables, taking out that dairy and those meat products. Dairy and meat products naturally cause constipation. So adding and medication and stress. So you've got like all these things going against you. And on it, you have to go to the bathroom regularly as much as possible because having all of that stuff in your body isn't really good. Um, 
constipation is uncomfortable and it, it doesn't feel great. It makes us irritable, but it also kind of leaks more chemicals into your body. So as much as you can get your constipation under control, the better off you are. And again, even if you just overhaul your diet to, to deal with constipation, you're doing your body such a great thing. So drinking more water, obviously here in Arizona, we know we, especially during the summer, we have to drink so much more water, as much water as you can. Um, if you need to flavor it, flavor it with some lemon and some cucumber or some berries, some add some sparkling water. However you need to get that water in your body, you're going to be better off. Um, fruits and vegetables have a lot of water content, so those are going to help with hydration and the constipation because they're, they're hydrating and they're fibrous. So you've got, you know, two things working for you there. Exercise. We all know we need to exercise. There's a lot of research that shows that exercising for Parkinson's is one of the best things you can do. Um, but that also helps for constipation because you're getting your body going, you're getting your body moving, and then things are going to start moving through your body, and that'll help you. So what about protein? We get this a lot. Um, we do a lot of talks that support this. So the number one question is, well, well, protein and medication, and then if I switch my diet and take out all, you know, my beef and chicken, where am I going to get my protein? You can get all protein from plants. So if you look at it, cows eat the, the plants and the grass and their grains and their seeds and whatever they're fed, they're getting their protein from plants. So we're getting our protein from the, the cows who ate the plants. So um, all your protein can come from plants. Again, soy is high in protein. Quinoa is high in protein. Um, all of your beans are really high in protein. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Um, protein can interfere with the absorption of some of your medications. So if you have that interference, just make sure you're watching your timing and protein and try and avoid protein as much as possible during your day. Have your higher protein meals at night, maybe when your day is over and you know you're going to be going to bed soon, you don't have to go anywhere. So that way your body can kind of have a, a level playing field during the day and not so much interaction. Because when you get the meds and your and your your food proteins fighting against each other, that's what the issue is. And the food proteins absorb faster and easier than your medication protein. So the food protein takes over. If you have your medication within 30 minutes of having a steak, your steak is absorbing all that protein. Your medication protein is not being absorbed, so you're not getting the full effect of your meds. So really just give yourself a good window. And the best way to do that is follow your doctor's, you know, suggestions and the medication suggestions, but also self-monitor and see what you feel and what you notice. Oh yeah, I can have tacos, but I have to wait two hours after I take my meds. So I know my medication, you know, is absorbed, but then it doesn't seem to affect me as much. So it really is all about the individual, but there are some guidelines to just kind of, you know, an hour before and an hour after medication, you want to avoid protein. This is another chart of the top seeds, the, the peanut butter, all the nuts, um, oats, lentils, beans, some of our greens, you know, kale and spinach are up on that list, and then potatoes. Potatoes have protein. Who knew? Um, what can I do? So again, self-assess, keep a food diary. If you want, we have a chart that we give to our clients and our support group. It's just a weekly chart, and it shows what I have for breakfast, what I have for lunch, what I have for snacks, what I have for dinner, and then how do I feel at the end of the day? You can just do this in a diary or get the chart from us. But kind of keeping a week at a glance and then looking at it at the end of your week and seeing, oh yeah, these are the things I ate and this is how I felt. That's going to let you self-assess and let you self-gauge to be like, every day that I had bacon for breakfast, my meds were off, you know, at this time, or I didn't feel so great, or I had to take a nap, you know, two hours earlier than the day I didn't have bacon. Whatever it may be for you, food is such an important Thing for our bodies and our health and our minds that you don't want to limit it and make it stressful and hard, but just kind of self-monitoring is going to let you know what you can and can't do for yourself. And then seeing a dietitian, um, it can help you go over diets, getting suggestions from your doctors also. Evaluating your kitchen and pantry. What can you absolutely give up today? 
maybe you are like, okay, Vanessa, I'm going to go with that cheese and I'm going to go with that milk. And I'm going to go to the grocery store and go get some, you know, substitutions that are dairy free. They're still going to be processed just as your cheese and your milk are processed, but at least they'll be dairy free. So that'll even help wean you off of that and give you a, a better substitute than adding those dairy products to your body. I always go organic. Whenever you're buying anything, go organic as possible. It tends to be a little bit more expensive, but do it as much as possible. We have a list that gives you the best foods to buy organically and then the things that, you know, it's okay to have conventional or non-organic. Do some meal prepping, planning ahead. So you're when you're hungry after a workout or after you've been running errands all day or, you know, you're just bored at home, you're like, oh yeah, I need a snack. If you plan ahead and have a couple more meals and um, items that are already prepared in your refrigerator or you've already overhauled your pantry in your refrigerator, you'll have those things that are readily available, but they're healthier options. So that'll help you keep on track of eating healthier than going back to the bad foods. It's okay, have some dairy free yogurt at your house. If you really, or ice cream, if you really like ice cream and you're like, no, I'm gonna give up ice cream, don't give it up completely. Try a dairy-free option so you have it. Because at least if you have it in your home, you're not going to go out to Dairy Queen or Baskin Robbins and be like, well, I guess I just really want ice cream, so I'm going to go do this. And then you'll feel better, too. You'll be like, at least I have that in my freezer. It was a dairy-free option. Yeah, it's still processed. It's a better option than, you know, that milk-heavy and cream-heavy ice cream. Get involved in some sort of class or a recipe exchange with some friends. A potluck, which are really hard to do right now, um, but you can do something virtually. Yes, or here's a recipe, I'm going to email it to you, or join an online cooking class. Just get some fresh ideas and get more familiar with the ways to implement these things. And it looks like that is um, the end of my talk. We have recipes and shopping lists classes that we used to do with COVID we're doing classes. Um, it's a better than no cooking classes, it's not the best. We have a bunch of resources and tools, we have the references and printable handouts. So if you need anything along the way or you just want to reach out and talk more that um, I'll give Melissa our contact information or Parkinson's disease nutrition is our website. And it looks like we are going to have some QA. So, one of the questions is Truvia as a sugar substitute. So, Truvia is a good sugar substitute. Um, it would be in line with your Splenda um, or your honey, your agave. You want to use something that is plant based. So, we definitely agree with Truvia. Um, the next one is I want to change my diet. My PD, what is the first step I can take? Where do I start? I can't make all of these changes at one time. You you absolutely cannot make all of these changes at one time. Um, as Vanessa stated, it's stressful. You're already in a stressful situation to begin with. Um, the best way to change your diet and to help improve your Parkinson's would be to, um, at home on your own, you can just take one thing that's in your pantry or your refrigerator, like today or even tomorrow, um, and let's say it's your yogurt, you like to have Greek yogurt or yogurt in the morning. So one thing that you can do for yourself right away is like switch out that yogurt to a non-dairy yogurt. They're available in every single store and they just like regular yogurt, they're different textures, they come flavored, they come unsweetened, they come different fruits and that's very easy to do. But then also reach out to your, the resources that are available. So like a resource like our website or Vanessa or myself, we're both nutritionists, we can easily help you make those changes that, um, that don't stress you out. Um, speak to your dietitian if you have one or ask your doctor to recommend a dietitian for you. So for yourself today, it's easy to make just one, one start and then, it, and then it just sets you off and, and then the next time you make another one, it gets easier and easier. Um, the next question is, do you provide nutritional counseling? Yes, we do. Please reach out to us either by email or by phone number. Um, we uh, will have those resources for you. 
um, Alyssa can get that to you. We absolutely do. Um, we liked to meet in person so we can do nutritional counseling either in person like a one-on-one -on -one. we can come to you if you're comfortable with that if you're not comfortable with that you can do it via facetime or a zoom right. or um some sort of video interaction and when we do our nutritional counseling we do a one-on-one -on -one. we get to know you we get to know your eating habits um how you're feeling your medications i'm um, just kind of an overall what you when do you go shopping what do you have in your home right now what are you comfortable doing? What are you not comfortable doing? What do you need help with? And then we kind of, we can't prescribe a diet. Everything that we have to help you eat better and healthier. And nutritionally. And, yeah, and nutritionally and for your symptoms and for your Parkinson's. There are some people out there who have been like, I have Parkinson's, I switched to a plant-based diet. These are the symptoms that I've noticed that have gone away. Constipation is number one. Um, medication interaction. So you know, people who have switched over to more of a plant-based diet have less interaction with their medication. So their medication is getting more absorbed. So they're feeling better. It's working more. Um, you really have to see what it is for you. So yeah, we do provide those resources. Um, the next question is about our meal kits. So we do a meal delivery service in Tucson and, and um, Phoenix, so Southern Arizona. But we also have a service on our website where it's kind of like the meal services you see on the TV or online where they send you a box. Um, so we send a box with recipes and all of the dry stuff. All of the measurements are measured out. All of the, the dry products are there. And then we give you that grocery list to go either, you know, get the fresh fruits and vegetables that you may need. Or maybe you need like a plant-based butter. Um, so all the stuff that we can't shipping and it's it's too much to keep cold and too much of a risk so we give you that list of all those things that you can go buy fresh at the store and then just add them to what we've already sent you and you have complete meals that you cook on your own they're they're designed and tailored to people with parkinson's and they're you know they're partners with their spouses they're for one or two people depending on your household um we have that on our website we also have a cookbook that is designed for people like a workbook so you get it it has four weeks of a menu shopping list and the recipes and then as you go along you can take out recipes that you don't like and replace them with as soon as i get the website updated have a, a resource list of more recipes that you can print off or um, get shipped to you and add to your 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 cookbook manual so all of these things are tailored for people with parkinson's mm -hmm making these recipes and we want your input. I mean, we put these recipes out there and that's from our combined experience. We both are chefs, we both do personal cooking for our for private clients. So that's the recipes that we tried and true, like how you grow up with your, your, your dad, your grandpa, those recipes that are handed down. But we always want input from people that get our recipes. Feel free to always call us and, and, and tell us what you, know, you added and stuff. And, and, it's, and then therefore, you are getting that interaction like you would during a cooking class, or it gives you some community and it's, it's fun. So our next question is, I have Crohn's. You said to eat, is there a way to narrow it down some? Yes, there is. This is something, this is a question that's a little more intricate. This is a question that's better answered if we answer specifically with you, whether you call us or we email you. And because Crohn's is an inflammation issue, um, it, it's a little more intricate. So um, if a certain food like um, bananas or something causes that inflammation of your Crohn's, you certainly do not want to eat that. In general, and I speak literally generally, a lot of times when people have a Crohn's flare-up, they have to go to a very basic diet that is very bland and usually soft. And so what, out of that, once their flare um, comes under control, then you can start adding back in a lot of these, your fruits and vegetables. So because we do promote a plant-based, um, it would be all of those. Um, and that's the most basic answer is once you come out of a flare-up, then, and you're getting, adding more foods into that bland diet, and you can add a little bit more of these fruits and vegetables, but we can go into that a little bit more in depth personally or on the phone or through an email for you. Um, and then our last question is, 
one of our last questions is if we can't go totally is it still beneficial to do it a few uh, days a week? Oh my gosh, the answer to that is absolutely that is. Even the, the best way that we try that we tell people is even if you're only gonna do it one day a week. So let's say you're gonna pick Tuesday and Tuesday you're gonna go plant-based that day. So you're gonna have a plant-based um, yogurt and then for lunch you might have a really good peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then for dinner you're gonna have maybe some bean chili or a quinoa dish and then the rest of the week you stick more to what you're familiar with um it absolutely yeah even just if you just trade out one meal a week or one snack a week anything to help your body is beneficial whether it's a little bit or a lot so without any doubt um just give it a try and it's a lot easier than you think and it's just as delicious and so yes, I'm I'm emphatically saying yes. <laughs> and then uh, this has got our last question here. Absolutely, <laughs> turmeric is so good for you. It's kind of the newest newest trended superfood. If you're going to do turmeric, you want to try and do it every day. Um, you can add it to your food, or you can kind of do it in a shot. You can add it to your smoothie. You can do it in a little bit of water. Whatever you do, I. I believe it's a teaspoon of turmeric and a little sprinkle of black pepper. For some reason, the best way to um, get the turmeric to, to work is a little bit of black pepper, just like like just a little bit of like a dash, like a sprinkle. Um, again, add it to your food, add it to the smoothie. You can take capsules. They're good at anti-inflammatory. I believe there is, um, gosh, I forget what it is. I can I can um, send Melissa more on the turmeric, but there's a whole little like recipe to mix turmeric with pepper and a couple of other of spices. But it's really good for your body. It's very it's an anti-inflammatory. It's got good properties to it. And you know, it, it can go with Indian food or Mexican food, or you can just take the capsule if you don't like the taste of it because it kind of has like a little bit of a bitter taste. But the capsules I believe have the black pepper mm -hmm. in it too. Mm -hmm. and so, when you're making your potatoes, even if it's a baked potato or you're going to fry some up in your pan, then a little bit of that turmeric, and it, it really does just take a little bit and a little bit of black pepper with all of your other seasoning for your potatoes. Oh my gosh, so great. Thank you. There's no more questions.